In this sequence of videos, we're going to be learning about moment generating functions. So first of all, before we actually start generating these moments, let's figure out what a moment is. So what's a moment? Well, it's related to an expectation. So if we want to know what the first moment of a random variable is, we just take the expected value of that random variable. And if we want the second moment of a random variable x, then that is the expected value of x squared. And more generally, we can look at the kth moment, and that would be the expected value of x to the k. Um, also useful is central moments. So when you have a central moment, we have the random variable minus its expected value. So the kth central moment would be the expected value of the kth power of x minus the expected value of x. All right, so this is what moments are. And it would be nice if we could calculate lots of moments quickly. So instead of having to calculate this expectation and then this expectation and then this expectation, it would be nice if we could have a pretty straightforward way to calculate a bunch of them. So what we're going to do is use a moment generating function, or MGF. All right, so let's define an MGF. So if we have a random variable x, then the moment generating function for that random variable is denoted by capital M and then a subscript x and then parentheses t. So that's how we denote the MGF. And how we calculate it is it's the expected value of e to the t x. All right, so we know that if we want to calculate the expected value of some function of x, we need to either take a sum or an integral, depending on whether we have a discrete random variable or a continuous random variable. So if we're in the discrete case, we know that we calculate an expected value by taking the sum over all the possible values that um, our random variable can take on. And we have e to the tk times the PDF evaluated at that value k. And then if we have a continuous random variable, this expected value here is an integral over all the values so from negative infinity to positive infinity of e to the tx times its PDF. And of course, we're integrating with respect to x. All right, so this is our definition of MGF. And of course, we can only use this if these expected values exist. So they need to exist for some t in a neighborhood of 0. If this expectation does not exist, then the MGF does not exist. So that's our definition of MGF. Now we need to think about how we actually use it to generate our moments. So what we're going to do is take our MGF and then take derivatives. So if we want the nth moment of x, then we're going to take n derivatives with respect to t and then evaluate at t equals 0. So if we want the first moment, then we take our MGF, take one derivative with respect to t, and then evaluate it at t equals 0. All right, so that's our definition, and then that is how we use the MGF. Now, for a lot of students and people, um, this looks very strange. It's like, why is the MGF defined as expected value of e to the tx. It kind of looks like this magical thing, and then you just do this weird um, derivative and evaluation, and all of a sudden you have the moment. So let's talk about why this actually works. So if you remember back to maybe calculus, then the, um, e to the x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial plus, and just keep on going forever. So what that means, if we want to have e to the tx instead of rather than just e to the x, we will just write tx instead of x all through here. So e to the tx is equal to 1 plus tx plus t squared x squared over 2 factorial plus t cubed x cubed over 3 factorial plus go on forever. All right, so so far we've just used a uh, kind of basic calculus um, statement, and now we're going to take the expected value. So we're going to now have x be a random variable. So we ex take the expected value of e to the tx. Well, we know that expected value is just linear, so we can just take the expected value of this, plus the expected value of that, plus the expected value of this, plus the expected value of this, plus blah, blah, blah. So let's go ahead and do that. Expe expected value of 1 is 1. 
expected value of t times x. Well, t is a constant, so we have expected value of tx is t times the expected value of x. And then the same thing goes here. t is a constant, so we'll have t squared over 2 factorial times the expected value of this, which is expected value of x squared, and so on, plus t cubed over 3 factorial times the expected value of x cubed, and so on. All right, so that's our moment generating function, and now we're wondering, well, why does it work to find our moments? So let's try finding our first moment and see why it works out. So to find our first moment, we know we need to take one derivative with respect to t and then evaluate at t equals zero. So let's take one derivative with respect to t and then evaluate at t equals zero. If we take a derivative of this with respect to t, it's zero. If we take a derivative of this with respect to t, well, e of x is a constant with respect to t, so then we just take the derivative of this, which is one then, and multiply by e of x. So we just end up with expected value of x. All right, if we take the derivative of t squared, we get two times t, the twos will cancel, so we end up with t times expected value of x squared. And then we just keep on going like that, and then evaluate at t equals zero. So when we evaluate at t equals zero, obviously this is already zero, this has no t's, so if we plug in t equals zero, nothing happens, it just stays as expected value of x. If we plug in t equals zero here, we get zero, and we know that we're going to have t's all going past this, so we'll have plus zero, plus zero, plus zero, and so on. So if we take our MGF, take a first derivative, evaluate at t equals zero, we get a bunch of zeros plus expected value of x. So that is exactly what we were hoping. We were hoping that um, taking a first derivative, evaluating at t equals zero would give us the expected value of x, and that worked out. Um, so that may satisfy your curiosity at this point, but we can just do one more just to kind of solidify things, get the pattern down. So if we take one more derivative with respect to t and then evaluate at t equals zero, um, then we're going to get zero plus zero plus x squared plus tx, t times the expected value of x cubed plus and so on. And then we evaluate at t equals zero, so we'll get zero plus zero plus the expected value of x squared plus zero plus zero plus blah, blah, blah. So in other words, we end up with the expected value of x squared, or in other words, the second moment of x. All right, so hopefully that helps us understand like what is a moment, what's a moment generating function, how do we use it, take derivatives, evaluate at t equals zero, and why it works out.